take a uh, welcome everybody to the church and um, basic details there's sign up sheet uh, in the table please if you haven't signed up it's important for us to know who was here so we can continue the conversation and there's a bathroom right there in the corner if you need one aside from that I think that's my job for the day so uh, I'm gonna leave it to Joy thank you so much for coming I want to thank uh, Luis Torres and First Unitarian and Metro Justice and uh, Alan Newton and Marv Mitch and everyone and Franny and everyone who helped us coordinate this event here in Rochester. So um, our event today is part of a bigger week-long worker tour across New York State um, to educate the public about working conditions and garment factories and what we can do as consumers to improve uh, these conditions. Um, so I'm Joy Perquette. I I'm actually from this wonderful city of Rochester and I am the campaign coordinator at Labor Religion Coalition. And this is a statewide organization that works together with people of faith, community members, and labor unions around the issue of economic justice. And we have a core value of, of the value of humanity and, and human worth. Some of the campaigns that we're working on are living wage, uh, farm worker rights, sweatshops, fair taxation, and so today I'm here to talk to you about uh, the issue of sweatshops. Um, and specifically we're working uh, with New York State to have them respect workers' rights when they're buying their apparel, garments, and uniforms. Um, so the workers that we have with us today are from Gildan. Gildan is a company that you may have not heard of, but you probably have their products. They are a large manufacturer of blank t-shirts, and they are the largest supplier of Adidas in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, did anybody happen to see the Gildan ad that was during the Super Bowl by any chance? It, was a little, it wasn't quite PG, um, but so Gildan has traditionally been uh, a manufacturer, so they've worked directly with producing the t-shirts, and now they're trying to break into the um, uh, brand industry like Nike and Reebok and the rest of them. Uh, so as a manufacturer, they supply to Adidas, and the workers will talk a little bit about Adidas, and they also supply to governments, so they supply to the New York State government. Um, so with that, it is my pleasure to turn it over to the workers. Uh, we have Raquel Navarro, uh, the General Secretary of the Citra Star Union of the Star Factory in Honduras. Um, and that union was formed in 2007. We have Telemark Pierre, and he is from Haiti, and he is the General Coordinator at the Union of Apparel and Textile Workers and they are fighting for better working conditions in their factory. And we also have with us Yannick Etienne, a national organizer for Bataille Ouvrier. And this is an organization in Haiti working uh, to support workers in their struggles. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to, produce, to present to you Telemark. Bonjour. Good morning, everybody. My name is Telemark Pierre. My name is Telemark Pierre. Coordinator General Syndical Kili Suta. I'm the General Coordinator of the Garment and tax Textile Workers in Haiti. We remember all the people who are present here today to share with us like the pain that is opened up and the pain that is opened up in Haiti. Et particulièrement dans cette textile. Ok, we we thank you for coming to listen and uh, to what we have to say about our working condition, our is that okay? Mm -hmm. Our sufferance 
and uh, that uh, we have uh, to deal with in the factories. Oui, mais nous t'avons même posé avec nous sur question et ouvrir ces questions sur le minimum qui va respecter en Haïti. One of the issues that we are fighting right now on, in, in Haiti is to respect of the minimum wage law. Et depuis le 1er octobre 2012, il y a un salaire minimum qui est 300 gouttes que l'État ici fait voter même par, et puis il n'a pas respecté. Ok, since October 1st, there was an increase in the minimum wage, but uh, the, the government or the Ministry of Labor does not take uh, any action to implement the law to force the factory owners to respect it. Okay, the minimum wage that we should get right now for eight hours of work it, it's uh, seven dollars meaning it's the seven dollars is equivalent to 300 goods goods is our national currency but uh, if we uh, change it to american dollars it will be the equivalent of seven dollars per day <coughs> Actually, what happened in October 1st, and uh, the workers knew that with the cost of living so high in Haiti, seven dollars will be was not was not a living wage. So they start mobilizing to to demand. $11.50 for the day. So after two days of mobilization to, fo to, to pressure the factory owners to give $11.50 and a lot of workers got fired, received intimidation, and uh, factory owners telling them if they don't want to work, they may leave, and uh, and then the workers has to back down on their uh, uh, struggle, on the mobilization, and return to work, and now are still fighting to force the factory owners to pay at least what the law says, which means uh, seven dollars. Uh, as you should uh, know that seven dollars won't help we will will not be able to live on it mm -hmm. we have to pay for food school for our children health and everything Another issue that is very important for us, you know, in the union, is the question of freedom of association. So that's an organization that created in 2009. Like uh, we first, we we as when we first start organize the the, the this, our union in 2012, when we informed the factory owners about the founding of this organization. Mm -hmm. Là, c'est officiellement le 15 septembre 2011. Il était un secrétaire qui était en septembre là dedans. Il a évoqué ceci là dedans. Okay, what happened in September of 2011 when we announced uh, the founding of this uh, union? Se six out of seven executive members were fired. Yo pa, nous pas une liberté pour nous comme si. Elle a eu un problème en tant que business pour nous capter fin ouvrir au tout bon vrai mais euh situation est vraiment difficile pour un membre syndicat et elle a eu un problème pour la défendre. Okay so although to our struggle to uh during September to January we got the reinstatement of our executive com com committee members but the question of freedom of association is still a very big issue because uh, they don't respect workers' rights as a, as a general rule in those uh, 
um, in the garment sector. Imagine you go your monkey, your monkey delegate or syndical managers, supervisor, cafe or anybody who bagay no under visa, who you bagay la voie au chapitre. For instance, like uh, union delegates have difficulties to move from one place to another. If a worker has a problem, if there's a labor conflict, you cannot leave your post to go and and talk with management about about it. Situation is very difficult for those who are not syndicated. Who who you may say that you accept the syndicate, but sometimes in the reality, it's not all that. Okay, in the word of mouth, they said yes, we 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 accept workers' right to have a union, but in fact, it's not what is going on in the factories. We have no really respect for the syndicate. We have no really respect. Moi, par exemple, il y a un ouvrier qui a travaillé dans l'entreprise là. Il y a un manager qui a fait pour une caméra pour faire photo, il n'est pas d'accord pour faire photo. Et quand il prend la colette, il se le dit dehors. Ok, je veux juste vous parler d'un cas qui a passé il y a deux semaines. C'est juste que, en plus de garder les membres de l'Union, il y a des membres de l'Union. No union members. Like uh, we have an example, one of our union delegates, and uh, refused that manager who take his picture while he was working. And then when he, he, he insists telling them that the manager not to take his picture, there was no reason for taking his picture. And uh, this is what he felt that was a form of harassment. So and he got up and and uh, and she said, no, don't take it. But the manager. He thought he was going to take the, the camera and then he gave him uh, a, a, uh, a punch in his uh, eyes and his head and, uh, and the worker got fired and the manager is still working in the, in the, uh, in the factory. So this is a kind of oppressive uh, environment that uh, workers are suing those uh, t-shirts. Okay. This is the type of uh, t-shirts that we sue in our factories. The operation that I make is closing the sleeves. So, how do we do it? I have to make 300 dozens. I have to sue 300 dozens in 10 hours. Meaning that, you mean 300 dozens twice because there are two sleeves. That's about 7,200 times that you have to, uh, to, to do it. Let nous passer dans l'État de New York et quitter dans ces acquises, quitter ça et l'autre côté toujours. Nous voyons vendre 16 dollars 99, 12 dollars 95. Or, nous même nous payons nous pour 6 6 douzaines 14 centimes. Okay. What happened is just that when we went to different universities, we saw they are selling those T-shirts from twelve ninety nine to sixteen ninety nine, and uh, and we are suing them, uh, and uh, for uh, a box of uh, fifty T-shirts for fourteen cents. Okay. This is why when in, 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 in October we wanted, instead of ha making it for 14 cents, the box for 14 cents, we wanted uh, to be at 35 cents. But we agree that if we cannot reach 35 cents, we would at least take 23 cents. But we never got it. <laughs> okay. okay. If they gave us 23 cents, we would have uh, accepted. But uh, they never did, so we're still doing it at 14 cents. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Respect. Respect. We are not getting respect. Like, for example, if Madame Nokia is working, 
7 heures du matin pour arriver à 5 heures de l'après-midi. So one of the, another thing is about the, the way women workers as you know women in those uh, in the sector are uh, outnumbered men as the majority of workers in the in the garment uh, and textile factories so they have to work from 7 to 7 a.m. to 6 to 7 p.m. all day if they are not suing or like uh, they are into folding or uh, doing um, to check the quality, they have to stand up all day. So when they are pregnant, if they try, let's say, to have a, to rest a little bit, you know, they have a lot of pressure. Managers don't want them to, to rest at all. And they don't even, they actually, according to the labor law, they should have chairs. They never give them chairs to sit because they say if they sit, they won't be, they won't work fast. So they have to stay stand up. Okay, so what happened, you see signs that the fatigue in those, like uh, their swollen feet, you know, after work, or if they are pregnant, you found cases where women have to stand up all day and they stay until very late, you know, before they could uh, uh, get their babies. So it happened that uh, a lot of times that women, after work, they give birth because it was too, too much pressure, too much stress uh, while working, standing up, as, you know, when they were pregnant. Okay, so uh, considering the situation of women, it, what, it, I told you about when they, they get pregnant and they give birth in that, these conditions, but after the birth of their children, there's no places that they could, they have to go, to go back right away, and then there's no place to, so they could breastfeed uh, uh, their, their children. So these women, they have to leave their kids either with their grandmother or someone else, you know? And uh, so it's very difficult for the women in, in those conditions. Okay. We hope that uh, you understand now uh, all the problems when we said that uh, all our, our sufferings as uh, workers, that will you understand and will you support our struggle so we have a better working condition, we have a just salary, and we have social uh, benefits that will help us as human beings. Okay. Another thing, besides better working conditions, better salaries, we would like to also, so you could send the, the, the message to the, uh, to the brands that we need more jobs, more orders in the factories too. Thank you very much. Buenos días. Eh, soy Raquel Navarro, secretaria general, representante del Sindicato de Trabajadores de Honduras, Centroamérica. Good morning. My name is Raquel Navarro. I'm the general secretary of the Citrus Star Union at the Star Factory in Honduras, Central America. Somos un sindicato eh, fundado en el 2007, eh, luchando por mejorar las condiciones de trabajo de nuestro país. We're a union that was formed in 2007 to improve working conditions in our country. Cuando hablamos de mejorar condiciones de trabajo, es eh, mencionarles a veces el, los movimientos que tenemos en el trabajo. When we're talking about improving working conditions, what we're talking about is all the repetitive movement and all the stress that we face on a daily basis. Eh, nuestra empresa trabaja para Gildan eh, con las marcas Adidas y Nike. Son las prendas que nosotros confeccionamos en nuestra empresa. 
Our factory is owned by Gildan, and we make clothing for Nike and Adidas. This is an example of what we make. A veces eh, nosotros, las mujeres, eh, tenemos muy condiciones muy malas en los puestos de trabajo. Sometimes, especially as women, face poor working conditions. Pues eh, una de las condiciones, mi operación es eh, eh, limpiar las prendas, eh, tal vez con gafas, eh, mascarilla, eh, guante, con unos químicos que perjudican mucho a la salud. My job is to clean stains off clothing, and I ha do have a mask and um, goggles and gloves, but even so, I'm dealing with toxic chemicals. El cual eh, laboro 11 horas, eh, solo así de pie, eh, de 7 de la mañana a 6 y 20 de la tarde. I work an 11 hour shifts from 7 in the morning until 6.20 in the evening, standing the whole time. Eh, también de, a, a veces después de limpiar la prenda, eh, también a veces planchar con eh, vapor mucho en nuestro cuerpo, porque ya ahí no podemos utilizar el guante, solo eh, planchar y luego salir afuera del trabajo a recibir tal vez eh, la lluvia, muy mal condición para nosotros. After cleaning off stains with toxic chemicals, I need to iron clothing with a very hot iron, so I'm, I'm facing all that um, heat vapor. And then on days that it's raining, I go outside and into the rain. Es por eso que nosotros eh, estamos en la lucha por mejorar la condición en lo que es el salario justo. We are in a struggle um, aiming to earn a living wage. Porque el salario que se nos paga es muy poco. Nosotros contamos con un eh, contrato colectivo firmado esperando que se nos respete. The wages that we earn are very low. We do have a signed collective bargaining agreement and now we're working to make sure that that is upheld and respected. Tenemos un salario muy bajo. Eh, solo eh, con el poquito de incremento que hemos logrado, eh, solo ganamos 60 dólares por semana. Our wages are very low, even with the small increases that we have won through our union contract. We earn only about the equivalent of 60 US dollars per week. El cual, eh, por eso, eh, no nos alcanza para comprar porque Eh, el costo de la canasta básica es demasiado alto en nuestro país. That's not enough to get by on because the cost of living in our country is quite high. Sin tomar en cuenta eh, la salud, la educación de nuestros hijos, ya no podemos darle una educación adecuada a ellos. Especially considering um, the health care and education that we want to provide for our children, it's very challenging. Tenemos varias situaciones en nuestra empresa, mujeres padeciendo de los músculos, quistes en los brazos, el cual han sido operadas y han quedado mal de su operación. Tienen que abandonar el trabajo, ya no pueden trabajar con esa condición así. There are women in my factory who have muscle and nerve damage from the repetitive motion and who have cysts on their hands and who are able to get operations, but many times the operations are done poorly, so they've had to leave the garment industry. A veces, eh, compañeras, eh, tenemos eh, dos compañeros en nuestra empresa que se hacen tres veces por semana una diálisis eh, Enfermedad de los riñones y así ellos tienen que regresar a la empresa a trabajar. There are um, two workers at my factory who need to go to dialysis three times a week because of kidney problems and that's the conditions in which that they have to go back to work. Ahorita eh, estamos en la lucha eh, dialogando con los uh, gerentes de la empresa para poder lograr 
de que ellos al venir del médico eh, tengan un lapso de tiempo de descanso durante ese día. So currently we're in dialogue with the factory management so that the workers who are on dialysis don't have to go to back to work right away after receiving dialysis so that they would have a few hours to relax. También eh, mujeres embarazadas eh, piden permiso para ir al médico, tal vez se les ha negado, eh, ellos han tenido que perder tal vez hasta el bebé. There have even been cases where women who were pregnant felt ill and asked for permission to go to the doctor and one case where the woman was denied such permission and she ended up losing her baby. Es por eso eh, que nosotros hemos, eh, eh, seguimos luchando tal vez con las universidades y, y tal vez con grupos de fe de solidarizarnos a un solo grupo y luchar por, por mejorar condiciones de trabajo. And these are some of the reasons that we are building solidarity with university students and with religious communities so that we can achieve better working conditions through solidarity. Eh, gracias por su atención y esperamos seamos todos un solo grupo solidarios para poder mejorar. Thank you for your attention and I hope to um, continue building solidarity together to win better conditions. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not going to be too long because I think uh, my comrades from uh, Honduras and of course Haiti told you about what you ought to know about the working condition. But we here uh, to uh, make you understand what's the situation. But we want you to work with us so we could, you know, in solidarity and uh, so we could change the working condition. But because we already take the, we engage ourselves in a struggle to change our conditions. But we are handing our hands to you so you could also do your part as uh, uh, people of, uh, uh, as we, we are hoping that uh, humanity can be a better world. And then uh, as people of faith, we feel that you will understand it more than any other people. Because one of the things that keep us going in, in, in our faith is the fact that our brother, uh, Jesus says we have to love one another and we are all his brother or sisters. So our brothers and sisters in Haiti or in, Carib in the Caribbean countries or in uh, Central America or in Asia, yeah, we are having some trouble so we want you to be supportive of us. But being supportive is not just you are helping us but you are helping yourself too because they are situation uh, in that uh, if you don't engage, if we don't engage in the struggle on both hands of the situation, we won't, we won't go where we want as uh, people. So, so you heard that, uh, that we said uh, that we want the working conditions, better salary, we want better treatment as, uh, as worker because we have rights. But also, we tell you, we ask you that we don't want you to say, well, if this, all this thing happening in those factories, we we're not going to buy those clothes. No. You have to continue to buy them. Because if you don't buy them, you won't have the power, the leverage to tell the company, that's what we want change. So it's very important that you understand this, this fact. We, so, Either Telemark or Raquel said that we want more productions. We're not, uh, how do you say, masochistic? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we understand we are in a global uh, struggle where companies are trying to make more profits by uh, cre creating this exploiting environment for workers. 
So if we want to change that, we should tell them, we should not uh, let them running, run from one place to another. So we have to force them to change uh, their policies, the, the way they are treating workers. So this is your part to do it. Because why? Because you are the consumers. And they are relying on you to say, you are the consumers. You want to buy cheaper stuff, <laughs> right? But as we say, we want just 23 cents. That's all we want. I mean, you know, they are giving us 14 cents. We just want 23 cents. You see the difference. So I'm sure if you, they ask for you to pay six or seven cents more, I don't think it will be a big problem for you. So I think uh, they are uh, doing what is, is existing in those factories. It's just that they are relying on you for not saying anything, for not making them accountable, for not forcing them to change the situation. And then they said, if we, if we make, if we pay a higher uh, uh, cost uh, for uh, producing those t-shirts, you would buy them. You have to tell them you will buy them, you know, and you want them, you are buying them because you want them to change the working conditions. So it's very important that you understand this is what we want you to do. But of course, if there was a case like a, a, an extreme case, you know, that we would may probably ask you either to boycott or to ask the, the city, for instance, that is the city government or local government or state government uh, that are buying and clothes, uniforms and whatever, we will ask you to tell them, no, we, you don't want you to buy it. But you have to listen to what the workers is. If because the workers demand something, want something, so you are in solidarity with the worker. You can be something different from what the worker, because if that is not, it would be solidarity. He has something, it has to, uh, an equal, equalitarian relationship between the producer, the workers, and the consumers. So it's very important that uh, we deal with this issue. We came here to say the conditions are bad, we want them to be changed, but it doesn't mean that we don't want you to buy them. Please continue to buy them and continue to put pressure on the brand. And if there are alternatives, like uh, there's, the, for instance, there's an alternative uh, a project like uh, the Alta Gracia, for instance, and there are other union made uh, uh, t-shirts that you could buy so so you have to be finicky you have to look you have to uh, uh, ask people who are involved there are NGOs solidarity organization that know where the union made garments are, are, are produced either in the United States or elsewhere and they will tell you they will help you to 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 make your selection and where to buy it. Because the question, we have to keep on um, developing our power, our leverage as producer, that's what we have unions, you know, and as consumers, that's what you have organization that invite you today to listen to us. So it has to work on both ways. We, on your side, you are organizing to be better. On our side, we are organizing to put more pressure. And that way, this is solidarity. There will be equalitarian, egalitarian relationship. That's what we need in this world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annick. Um, I just want to do a time check. It's 9.20, but we started our event late. Um, so uh, we will be planning to go till 9.45 so that we have an hour for our event, just so you can plan your time. Um, Casey, um, I would like to induce uh, Casey Sweeney from Cornell University. She is an active member of United Students Against Sweatshops, and she's just going to speak a little bit about the student solidarity with the workers. Hi, thanks so much for having us, um, and thank you all so much, and I'll keep this very brief because we want to have a whole question and answer period, but 
Um, I'm a student at Cornell University and an organizer with United Students Against Sweatshops. We're a national network of students that has been around for more than 15 years now and we coordinate on campuses across the country uh, to support workers like Telemark and Raquel um, in their fights on the ground and we use our unique leverage as students on university campuses uh, to put pressure directly on the brands who have the most power in to improve conditions in the industry and so um, currently we have a big campaign against Adidas um, where uh, Telemark and Raquel both sew apparel for Adidas in their Gildan factories um, and uh, Adidas is refusing to, uh, um, in addition to these abuses in these factories, they are refusing to pay workers in Indonesia uh, the 1.8 million dollars they're owed in legally mandated severance pay when their factory shut down almost two years ago. Um, and so on campuses across the country we are demanding that our schools cut ties with Adidas and cut their contracts which are worth uh, thousands, millions, sometimes millions of dollars. Um, and uh, the way that you all can support, help support is uh, we're trying to start up a group in a few groups in Rochester and so having community allies is something that's super important to us as students and if you check out www.bodydas.com uh, a little Adidas the B in front of it pronounced the German way body does um, you can sign a petition uh, to stay involved and to stay in the loop and oh, I wanted to briefly tell you about an action we did uh, last night in New York City um, where two students were actually able to and two workers from Indonesia were able to flyer at a, an Adidas fashion show which was part of New York Fashion Week um, and it's okay if we can't show the picture but uh, one of the students my friend at NYU was able to actually walk the runway and hand a flyer to Selena Gomez one of their celebrity sponsors um, and it was great because two of the union leaders in Indonesia were there um, for the event outside and um, thanks so much for having us and if you have any questions I'll be around and yeah that's it <laughs>
and when they did we knew that it was going to be nice it was going to be pleasant for those that were going to receive the work because we knew that the whole reason they didn't want us american-made union workers is because they could definitely make it a heck of a lot cheaper by going to other countries and using and abusing the workers over there and that's exactly what they've done my union back in the day we complained we we did whatever we had to do to well the original sweatshop program was uh, founded by our union and um, we did whatever we could do and they just the public just laughed at us they didn't really care but when it started happening to other industries they said to us well you guys are all just women you know, it doesn't matter. But these women that went into these shops were the, were the main breadwinners for their families. We put the food on the tables for our children. Okay, they took those jobs away from us. And then slowly they went to other sectors of industry and they took them away, they took them away. They shipped them overseas to people like these that work hard every day and get nothing in return. Okay, so this has not happened overnight. This has been coming for years and years and years. And unfortunately, it's taken this long for people to wake up. Now we've got to do something. I mean, it's right here at our door. I mean, it's right at us. It's facing us. But I want to, I want to thank you guys for coming and putting this in our faces. And I'd like to, if you would grant me the pleasure and the privilege of having my picture taken with you guys. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to put it into our our quarterly publication that we call Reflections, and that will put it out to our members who work in different industries, and that will bring it to their to the face of it. And I'd also I will try to do with the AFL CIO too. So we definitely, you know, it, it breaks my heart when they were talking about the ladies standing all day being pregnant. You know, I had girls like that in my shop, and. They had chairs. They had chairs. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I could offer a suggestion, I guess. Uh, when the earthquake occurred in Haiti, uh, I know I, I can't recall on the web, uh, uh, the Gildan Activewear, they uh, donated $18,000 to an earthquake relief fund and then temporarily moved production to Nicaragua which made me curious to investigate that uh, the founding family and principal shareholder is the Chamandy family in Montreal, C-H-A-M-A-N-D-Y. And, um, in, and following that on the web, uh, historically uh, they shut down a factory in Nicaragua <laughs> to avoid unionization. Glenn Chamandy reported that there would be no problem with competition from China because their rates were, you know, very competitive with China. And I think uh, a suggestion that uh, the Chimandi family are the kind of the social lions of Montreal. They put on very conspicuous charity balls. Uh, Mrs. Chimandi has an art gallery, you know, the, the, the hobbyist for the, the rich and famous. <coughs> and uh, somewhat ironically, they, they support a settlement home for homeless children in Montreal well um, for the uh, children in Central America they get child labor with an occasional puncture wound uh, from the sewing machine and now it, there was a decade or so ago uh, a social action group in Quebec was on their case for a brief while and, and I guess what you need to do is fi find an alliance with someone in Quebec uh, to call to the attention of the Montreal social set, uh, just, you know, what this is about. I agree with you that actually we are in the process of having an action in in Montreal in front of uh, a Gildan uh, company because this is where they have the office. It's just across the street from the, the national radio station and uh, so it would be something, yeah. So, yeah, we are planning you know, different organization. Yes, we are planning to to have an action in in Montreal in 
I don't know when because we planned it for February, but I don't think we'll be able to do it in February. And then, uh, so, but there are other things that we have to do before we could uh, we could get involved in this uh, in this action. Yes, they are. Uh, uh, Montreal-based organization and that already inform about the possible having this action in Montreal and they will they said they will support it so not only the union talking about the FTQ meaning the Federation Work, uh, Workers Federation of Quebec and also other uh, union organization unions federation yes this they already said they will participate in this action so uh, yes it's not only we having uh, uh, the network of uh, unions making producing gilden trying to consolidate this thing the unions in each country are working hard and uh, so they could respect workers right but also we have allies in in montreal in quebec particularly who will help us to to have this action so how do you be informed when it's it's going to be helped did you have a question yeah Morning. Thank you all for coming out and sharing your experience with us. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, I had a question, two questions actually. Um, the first question being, I don't know if Gildan at all has kind of joined this corporate movement of trying to put on the front of being more socially responsible. A lot of corporations have like started different uh, departments or different like organizations within the organization um, to kind of promote themselves as being a more socially responsible company and even companies like Chevron, I actually just met someone who works for Chevron, but in the social responsible whatever <laughs> field, which is almost, I mean, I don't really know what she does or if it's even effective, but I mean, she was a firm believer in bringing change within a company, from, or bringing change to a company from within. Um, so I wasn't sure if A. Gildan at, at all had any sort of social responsibility type group, um, and if so, wondering its effectiveness. And then my second kind of question comment um, is sort of on the idea of um, when we see any commodity that's you know sold at a, a high price, um, when you know that a worker is making you know a s two cents on the dollar, when you know the rest is going into essentially profit, I wonder if or how I guess raising the price of commodities is going to ensure that workers are paid a living wage and why that's, I mean, because usually, I mean, you can, unless it's obviously a fair trade, you know, commodity or fair trade organization, the worker still isn't really benefiting from increasing the price of the commodity and it's still just maintaining this huge gap in profit um, for the company and between the wages of the workers. So I'm wondering if you know, increasing the price of, you know, Gildan Apparel or Adidas Apparel, whatever it may be, how that's actually going to affect workers on the ground, and if, in fact, will it actually, you know, bring about a living wage? I Well, he, feel, he feels that uh, if they uh, increase the, the cost of the garment, yes, the workers will get uh, a better uh, salary. That's his res his response. I don't know. You know. <laughs> uh, you know. I'm not too good in economics. You know. So, but one thing that I know is just that uh, let w let's, a, a company will tell you that uh, they are paying two dollars for a dozen. That's the contract they sign with the subcontractor. Okay. So the $2 they pay is for the cost of production. And the cost of production, you have to pay for energy, they have to pay for different items, okay? So I think those are the, those items that we have to take a look first. We have to investigate and see if, if this will work out. So this is why I, that's, I think uh, you know you have to do some kind of uh, calculation. So I'm not too good in mathematics. So I think this is this is the thing. But one of the things that I have to say, and uh, uh, concerning Gildan, Gildan is not the worst of the worst. You know, okay. Gildan is open to discussion. Go Gildan, for example, like uh, when we said that in 
in September when we informed the factory owners that uh, we formed a union and then six out of seven executive members were fired. So we start an international campaign to force Gildan to put pressure on the local factory owners to reinstate the workers. And actually they did. They send letters, they, they, they meet with them and tell them, well, you have to do this. Of course, they, they want to be a socially responsible company because uh, like uh, they heard uh, all over the world that uh, gilded workers are being fired for, the, for union organization, you know. So they did take some measures, they did take, take some steps to force the factory owners and they used that leverage. So this is why now we tell them, well, concerning the minimum wage law, they have to use the, this leverage again to force the factory owners and, and they, they even agree that uh, uh, to have some kind of in investigation, independent investigation to see if, uh, if the, the factories are not paying really the minimum wage. And then if, if the, f the findings, uh, the result of the finding show that the factory owners are not paying, they said they will, they will, will use their leverage to force the factory owners to do that. So, uh, but this is one factory, but there are different, uh, different demands, different matters that they have to deal with. This is what it's important to have the network of unions so that we want to, uh, to, to negotiate with Gildan common problems and uh, that we have in, those, in the different factories and then uh, to see and, and maybe sign an agreement with uh, Gildans to make sure that and uh, we need uh, the kind of, uh, to use this kind of leverage to change the working conditions. So I think they look like they are open. <laughs> um, um, hi, this is, um, I just wanted to add in a little bit, um, so I'm here as an interpreter, but um, I just want to introduce myself quickly and also just respond on this point too, because um, I think it's really important things to um, tease apart and talk about. Um, so my name is Liana Foxvogue. Um, I am a national organizer with Sweat Free Communities. It's a network of groups like Labor Religion Coalition that are working with state and local governments on their purchasing practices, and we're part of the International Labor Rights forum. Um, so yes, so Gildan does have a code of conduct and it does have a social responsibility, you know, a, a department and policies and you can read about it on their website. And it's doing better than some companies in terms of, you know, it shows you on their website where are the factories that are producing its products. Um, Gap, Walmart, a lot of other companies don't tell you where their factories are, whereas there is a whole set of companies that stand apart from those companies like Nike, Adidas, Levi's, on all of their websites, you can see where are the, fa the actual names and addresses of all the factories around the world that are making their products. And that sort of transparency is absolutely just the very first step that's needed to start being able to find out, well, what are the conditions and to be building solidarity with workers. So Gilden's code of conduct says that they will respect the domestic labor laws of the country, and that they will respect the standards of the International Labor Organization. So that's a starting point, right? But what we're hearing about today is that the minimum wage is not a living wage. And in Telemark's case, they're being cheated of the minimum wage because of the tricks that the management uses around the production targets that workers have. So what the workers are talking about today is they actually ha want this higher bar approach. They don't want to keep living in poverty. They don't want jobs that keep them in a cycle of poverty. They actually want to work towards a living wage. They want to work towards having um, real freedom of association where in both factories they have unions but workers are actually afraid to join the union um, because of the intimidation that's happening at the factory. And then they also want realistic production targets. And if you ever visit these factories, it's incredible how fast the workers are sewing, that um, Telemark has to sew 7,200 sleeves onto a garment every day within an eight hour period in order to get 
be able to earn the incredibly low minimum wage of seven dollars a day. So. Um, so, th th so it's you know this is actually one reason we're talking about this company on this trip because we actually believe it's a company that um, can do better and is in dialogue and has been making small changes. Sure. So we'll um, still take some more questions, but um, before we jump into that, we just wanted to show you our um, really fun pink fuzzy hat that we're going to pass around. So um, what we're doing on this tour is we're also raising funds for the organizations, the two organizations to bring back to their countries for worker empowerment programs that they do and for trainings that they do for workers in their factories that the workers can learn about their rights on the job. And so it's for them to be able to put on workshops and have basic materials for workshops and also um, some workers at their their factories go to university after they work a long 11 hour day so that they can also have books um, to when they go to university. So we're gonna pass the hat and um, thank you in advance for your generous donations. And 100% of the donations that you give today are gonna go back to their um, unions, which are you know very small unions, like Yannick's union, um, or Yannick's organization, the membership dues are 50 cents a month. So you know they. So it, it's hard for them to do very much with that. Um, so we're raising funds, and um, and we have support from universities for this tour, which is covering all our food and gas and plane tickets. So that's why everything we give today is going to be able to go directly to their groups. So I saw a hand. Yeah. yeah. I was wondering if there are any um, examples of um, companies that have been doing the right thing and paying. Yeah. yeah, there's uh, the Alta Gracia uh, factory in the, the Dominican Republic where they're paying workers uh, a living wage. It's a living wage according to the cost of living in the Dominican Republic. Of course, it's a small company. This is a, an exception to the rules, but it exists. And uh, this is why when I was uh, talking, I said, well, there are places where, you know, they are making those garments, they are uni union made uh, uh, garments, and Alta Gracia is one of them. So if you go to the university uh, bookstores, yes, there's always a, a rack uh, with Alta Gracia uh, t-shirts or sweatshirts uh, made, uh, in the Dominican Republic and where the, the workers are being paid a, a, a living wage. But so even though, and they have now, you know, they still, uh, they, they are in the process of negotiating a, a, a collective bargaining contract. And uh, I visit the, the, the factory and uh, the workers are really happy and you know, a lot of things are going on. And the relation with management is something really different. So they have meetings, regular meetings every week. If there's a problem, you know, they try to solve it together. There's a cooperation, is that collaboration between the unions and management? And then if there's any problem, they, 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 they work to solve the problem uh, together. So I, 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 and most of all, it's just that the, those, uh, the members of the union are not, uh, even they are happy with what they got, but they're not staying just like that. They are supporting other workers who are fighting for better wages too. So they're part of the of the the movement that uh, we know. So it's very important that you support this project so that it it functions, it exists, and it lasts too. The reason I ask that is because I think as important it is to hear the stories of people who are. Um, oppressed in their in the workplace. I think it's also important to lift up those images of companies that are doing the right thing as a, as an example. 
Because you don't have that example, then you just think that, you know, wh where, where, where do we do? What do we do with, with all that? No, absolutely. And I really appreciate the question. And we're actually selling DVDs um, of a short documentary about Alta Gracia. Um, it's really fabulous. It's just a 30-minute clip, and it's great for a conversation starter with a group of people. And I just wanted to add in a couple more statistics <coughs> in addition to what Yannick was saying, so you really get the full picture of what does a living wage mean for a family. So um, in Raquel's case, they have, they're in their second um, union contract right now. They've had their second collective bargaining agreement negotiations. And so in their contract, they have a wage hike of 8%. So they, you know, they've been able to win some small things through having a union, okay? So 8% wage increase compared to Alta Gracia, where workers earn over 300% more than the minimum wage. They get three times, more than three times the minimum wage. So, it, so what this has meant for workers really concretely is that there are workers who weren't able to go to university before, now they can go to university and, um, and work at the factory. There are workers who you know, had a really basic house um, with a tin roof and sort of you know, gaps between the roof and the walls, and now they were able to build a house out of cinder blocks. So it's made really concrete differences in workers' lives. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Are there any other questions? Luis? Yeah. I, I just want to go back to the question about the, how do we know that uh, increase will go into persons, and you, you can clarify this for me. But I guess my understanding is that the increase itself is just one step into creating leverage. So every time, Part of it is not like, our goal is not to increase the six cents, it's to increase the leverage, so that way we're able to enforce the six cents increase. Yeah. So it's like, if people do not, if that company doesn't know that, if they're not, they say to the public, yeah, we're increasing the, the price and pay, we're gonna be paying workers six cents more. And the real question is, have we been able to grow an organization that will be able to say, in the, in the same level, say like, no, no, they haven't and they need to be responsible for what they're saying publicly. Absolutely. So, you know, factory management will have no excuse to tell workers that we can't afford to pay you more when you're negotiating with us if the brand is actually starts paying a higher price to the factory. So absolutely, that's what they, they all talk about is how it opens up more space for workers to organize. So that's one thing. But the other thing is that actually we can form agreements with companies where they are required to pay living wages. So that can happen both from worker organizing, it can also happen from consumer organizing. So one thing, one program that the Sweat Free Purchasing Consortium is working on developing with state and local governments is what they're calling a Sweat Free Manufacturers Program. You know, it's a process. It's going to be a process when your, your starting point is that most of your products are coming from sweatshops, right? And we're not saying, you know, stop doing business with those factories, but like, let's create a process that's gonna raise up the bar and support workers in their own efforts to improve conditions over time. And so we're, you know, bringing state and city governments along with this around the country. And there's, you know, this great movement in New York to, um, to do the same. Okay, so uh, that concludes uh, our talk today, and we'll be around for questions if anybody has some. And thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.